So Tom Reed here in Augusta, Georgia, I happen to run into this lady. Your name, ma'am? Iguana Mills. Okay, Iguana. And Iguana, I take these videos and I upload them to YouTube. You cool with that? Sure. Okay. Now, Iguana, we just started talking before I turned the camera on. You started to tell me something. I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. Um, I wanted to be interviewed because my daughter was killed on September the 7th, 2021, and they labeled it as an accident, and she was killed, and it was not an accident, and I'm fighting for justice, and I need as much help as I can to get justice for her so the people that kill her can be prosecuted and in jail for some time or however that should go. She was set up and killed on a dirt bike. They claimed she was in an accident on a wreck, but her bike was never wrecked when I got the pictures from the investigation and somebody tore her bike up like it was wrecked and when it never was wrecked on the 911 call you can clearly hear my baby alive and they stopped talking on the 911 call to finish killing her and it's just a very long story to my baby situation and I'm fighting for justice and I'm trying to get all I can get done. All right then get let's, let's get that let's, let's get it out there then because I got some subscribers and people do watch us. What is her name? Her name is Jazaria Gilliam. She was born July the 27th. She'll be 22 on next year, on next month, 2001. Hey, don't let them, hang on one second, excuse me. Hey, tell them don't reach in there to that dog. It'll bite people in my truck. Okay. Uh, and where did this happen? It happened on a dirt trail off of Richmond and Vixen's Road in Augusta, Georgia. Okay, and that date again? It happened on September the 7th, 2021, possibly at like 7.30. Okay. And spell her first name for me. J-A-Z-A-R-I-A. -A -A. Her last name is G-I-L-L-I-A-M. Okay. So you get a call, and what were you told? Um, I got a, a, a door call from the police. He came to my door, and he was like, I needed to make it to the hospital because my daughter was in an accident. And they never told me that she was dead. They didn't let me go view her body at the scene. They moved her from the scene and took her to the hospital and put her in this room and let me came and looked at her in the room. Nobody examined her, nobody did any blood samples, nobody did nothing. They just had my baby sitting in a room, and that's it. And this accident supposedly happened where? It happened off of Richmond Hill and Benson Road. But I mean, the, is there, was there a business there? It was a no? dirt trail where they ride dirt bikes and stuff. Gotcha, and why would somebody have moved her body? Um, I have the slightest clue, but the coroner, the investigators in the hospital couldn't give me those answers. They was like, um, a mother or a family member don't have to identify a body at the scene all the time. That's okay. what they told me. And I was like, if y'all came to my house for me to identify her and give her y'all, give her, give me y'all her name, I should have been able to come to the scene where she was and see her and identify her there. You're right. And what was the cause of death on the death Un Unspecified. Unspecified. Mm -hmm. And have you, were there any witnesses listed? Uh, it was a lot of witnesses, but each witnesses gave different statements. One witnesses that told them exactly what happened. First, he said he was a mile away, and all he heard was a boom, and he was never there on the scene. So when he ran down there with his dirt bike, because he said his dirt bike broke down, and his name was it's Maurice. He said his dirt bike had broke down, and he was running down after he heard the boom. And when he got down there, he said, my daughter had ran head on with another guy named Terrell, and flipped off of her dirt bike and went face first into a tree, came down from the tree, and the other boy dirt bike came, went in the air and came down on top of my baby. So when I visit my daughter at the hospital, after they told me the story that happened, that Maurice told the investigators and the police, that's what he told that happened when he was never clearly there. He had already said he wasn't there. He heard a boom and he ran down there. And I told the coroner and the investigators, my baby don't match what y'all told me. I was like, if she hit a tree, her face would be damaged, and her face was clearly not. And I was like, if a dirt bike, a 450 dirt bike fell on top of her, which they had been driving all day, she would have been burnt up and squished because she was only a buck 10. And she was not burnt, no broken legs, no broken bones, no nothing. Only thing she had was a hole in the back of her head and a hole in her jaw. And on the 911 call, when she was on alive saying, mm, mm, they stopped talking on the 911 call and broke her neck. Okay. And those was all the injuries she had. She had no signs of scratches, no burns, nowhere, no broken bones, nothing. Okay. Nothing from an accident. Nothing from a dirt bike accident. Okay. Well, I'm on your side, but what would have been the motive 
of a false report. What would be the modem of a false report? Yeah, why would why would it get written up as anything other than what happened? Because the people that she was hanging with set her up to be killed. Okay, all right. And that's why they did a false report and made up a story before they got there. And on the 911 call, you could clearly hear the one of the guys in the background saying, call Mike Mike. Um, somebody got to get me to Mike Mike car. But Mike Mike wrote a statement like he was there. But you can hear the guy saying, call Mike Mike to the scene. Okay. But Mike Mike wrote a statement and said he was already there and, what, and told some of the pieces of what happened. But everybody had a different story on the statements. None of them matched up. If everybody was there and seen what happened, everybody should have seen the same thing, not different stuff. Okay. And how is your first name spelled? I-G-U-A-N-A. -A. Okay. And if somebody had some information, where would they call? Um, they can contact me through my Facebook, Boss Unique, Unique Iguana, at gmail.com, on our email, and that's about it. Okay. Have you contacted any of the news stations for investigative reporting? Yes, I have. Um, when I just did an interview with the Unsolved about a week ago, they connected me with the North Carolina news station, and so I'm waiting on them. I emailed them, and I'm waiting on them to contact me back. And I did the news station down here, but they denied and never called me back or never did nothing because they're affiliated with Richmond County, and Richmond County is a part of my baby death that's hiding and trying to throw it up under the rug. Okay. And spell out that Facebook for me, please. U-N-I-Q-U-E, last name M-I-L-L-S or either you can use that boss unique b-o-s-s-u-n-i-q-u-e -S -S -E. okay you got any more questions for me no i don't thank I, you thank you so much for letting me do this interview you're and putting my baby story out yeah i hey, wish the best of luck it's unfortunate my condolences thank and i'm going to upload this tonight all right thank you so thank much you. thank you